Hello, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK around the world and welcoming you to my channel if it's the first time you're passing through and if it's not, it's the same old shenanigans. I appreciate your support, I appreciate your comments and I love the interaction. Um, today, I, want, I wanted to know whether it's unstable police that kill. Um, the reason why I'm asking this because I, I'm just a bit concerned that they're giving power and a gun to police officers who are unstable. Um, where am I going? Because of um, Atatania Jefferson, 28-year-old black woman who was in her home playing a game with her 8-year-old nephew and she was shot dead by a police officer in Fort Worth, Texas. Apparently, a neighbour had called the police about the door being left open. It was late evening and he was concerned, according to him, that the door was left open. And so, um, it was a routine, non-emergency call, but a herd of police officers turn up at the door. Apparently, Aaron Dean, who's 34, is heard shouting, show us your hands, before simultaneously riddling the house with bullets, killing Atatania Jefferson. Is that normal behaviour? Is that the behaviour of someone who is stable? Wouldn't a stable police officer knock on the door and say, excuse me, is, ev is anybody there? Is everything okay? Just in case there's somebody sick or somebody, you know, who's hurt themselves or something. They wouldn't go guns blazing, firing bullets, unless they had information other than the door being left open. Now, the neighbour is saying that he is, he regrets calling the police because she ended up dead. And that has me wondering, what did he tell the police? What did the police ask him? Did they ask him what nationality the, ha the family was or the occupiers were? Did, did they ask him whether or not he'd seen anything suspicious? Did they ask him whether or not, you know, they were gun owners? Because in Texas, I think nearly everyone owns a gun, a gun even though black people are not supposed to have one. She apparently had one, but it was in her bedroom. It was not in the room where she was playing games with her nephew. So it led me to believe what kind of police officers are on the street. Do we have biased police officers that are discrediting the whole police force? Is that what we have? Do we have police officers that need medical attention? Who have mental health issues? who are not leaving the house in the right frame of mind, who are not trained properly, who, who overreact or who are reactionary and who don't follow protocol. Is that what we have on our streets? Because like I said, it's not all police officer, officers. So I'm wondering if we have people on our streets in positions of power who are unstable. What kind of vetting do they have? Do they have health? Do they have health um, vetting? I mean, are they vetted for mental health issues? I mean, and how does one arrive at that without that officer disclosing that they might be schizophrenic or they might have, they might be bipolar, they might be sociopaths, they might be psychopaths, all we know. They might have some other agenda. But these are people they're putting in uniform and giving orders to go and attend to a non-routine investigation where a young woman ends up dead. So something is amiss because like I said, you know, what a couple of police officers, similar to Amber Geiger, going into the house of Botham Jean, claiming that um, she thought it was her apartment and shooting an unarmed person. Apparently there's been nine police officers who have shot six unarmed 
black people since this year. It might not seem a lot, but the fact of the matter is, it's disturbing. Because it's not like these are black people are posing a threat, or are they a threat just because they're black? That is the question. I am wondering if by virtue of somebody making a non-routine call and the officer attending, realising that it's the home of a black person or a black person is occupying those premises, that they all of a sudden need to be armed and dangerous. It's quite disturbing. It really is disturbing. I did a similar video before and um, because we live in a kind of a sensitive um, society, especially now, I decided to take it down and redo it in a different way. So, you, th th so this video is going to ring similarities if you saw the original video but since not many people saw it I took it down pretty quickly um what else did I want to say um Aaron Dean who's 34 responded to a non-emergency call um a neighbor reported it the door was open late at night um yeah and apparently he just ordered her to show her hands and fires bullets um yeah, she had a gun in her bedroom, not in the room where she was brutally murdered. And it's not unusual for people in Texas to have a gun. Um, the police did not identify himself. It's not as if the police officer said, you know, knocked on the door and said, look, um, police officer, uh, you know, I have got backup. If he was concerned there was more than one person in there, he could have said, look, I'm a police officer. I have got backup. We, we are armed, is everything okay in there? If he was that concerned. But why would you shoot through a window? You don't even know who's in there. And shoot so discriminatory, so discriminately, that you shoot and kill a young lady who's playing games with her nephew. And the thing is, is that's concerning is that, you know, what message is it sending? out to people especially black people who are unarmed are they supposed to be walking around on tender hooks worried that you know they're going to come across an unstable police officer because they have to be unstable they can't be fully trained stable and professional police officers reacting in that way apparently he resigned so he obviously knew what he did and he resigned before they could sack him and he ha is up for a murder charge. But, you know, it's a bit like, you know, closing the gate, work before, you know, after the horse has bolted. That's what it's a bit like. You know, I think the, the system needs to check who they have on staff, both in the US of A and in the UK. Because in the UK, the... Um, the, the type of police officers who behave in that way do it very similarly. They might not be shooting people left, right and centres because the gun culture isn't quite like that over here. But they're still brutalising, they're still holding people up against the wall, they're still breaking ribs, they're still strangling and using excessive force when it's black people. And killing black people through excessive force. And it's because of the fear for some reason, it's almost like they think black people have some kind of super strength. Do they think black people are superheroes? Do they think they have more strength than white people? Is that why they feel as though they've got to use excessive force? I don't understand why they can't use the same strategy they use on white people, on black people. I mean, I watch a lot of these police officer um, programs where, you know, where the police stop people in cars. I mean, they make sure that they don't show too many black people, or if they do, it's very, very minimal. But I notice that with um, white people, they negotiate, they talk. They actually have a conversation. But with black people, it's totally different. They don't have a conversation. It's almost like they're on the defense from the moment they know there's a black person 
in the car or a black person that they have to approach or arrest. It's almost like they go into survival mode and react in a way that shows that they haven't been trained. Especially when they don't have a gun, especially when these people are unarmed. I don't understand if they were armed and, you know, they're going around guns blazing. But most of the time, the people they kill are unarmed. So what is the threat? I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand. So, Aaron Dean, what was he thinking? When he opened fire to a single woman occupying a house with her eight-year-old nephew. I've put down a couple of things. It's a home of a black person, therefore it has to be dangerous and the occupants have to be armed, therefore we are going to shoot first. Black people are perceived as threatening because of their colour, so by virtue of their colour. And the thing is with a lot of black people, especially I've noticed with black Americans, you know, their actual tone is quite aggressive. And, you know, if you don't understand the culture and you don't understand the tone, they've probably, you know, I'm just, I'm not justifying it, but do they see that as threatening? And the thing is, they've been around black people for long enough to know how they communicate. So why would they find that threatening, especially if they don't have a gun? And especially when most of them don't back it up anyway. They have a lot of this, but you hardly find any of them backing it up. So what is the threat? You can't just be threatened by a voice or somebody speaking or somebody airing an opinion. But it's almost like black people are not even allowed to air an opinion. Otherwise, they're being scrutinised to make sure they're not saying something that is inappropriate, something that can have them, you know, something, something you can get them on. It's like they're gunning for something to get them on or gunning to provoke. I don't understand what it is. You know, and it's almost like I think a lot of people, they actually um, have a perception of black people, you know, who have an opinion or who speak in a way that could be perceived as aggressive. I think they have a perception that they could do a lot more or they're capable of doing more. And so they stop them in their tracks. I don't know what that woman said to the police officer if she said anything at all i don't know if she said oh i've got a gun who is it when she heard noises outside i mean if the police don't identify themselves how do you know who they are how do we know she wasn't standing her ground how do we know she wasn't saying is that an intruder who is that because they didn't identify themselves they just started shooting or he started shooting and they've got it all on body camera. They've got it all on body cam. Exactly what he did. He just went around, said, show your hands. Didn't wait for anything. Didn't wait to see anything and just started shooting. So that is not the behavior of a rational, stable human being. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, did he think there was more than one person in the house? And what did the neighbours say to the police that warranted so many police officers at the scene? Because I understand there were seven or eight police officers for an open door. I mean, to be honest, if, if I came home and the door was open, I, might, I would probably call the police. But I wouldn't expect them to go in their guns blazing. I wouldn't expect them to do that. I'd expect them to identify themselves and see if there's anybody in there, walk in, check around. Of course, they might need to have some kind of um, defence mechanism, some kind of um, protection. But I'd expect them to go around, make sure that the area is safe and then say, OK, Black Bright, it's OK for you to go in. There's nobody here. We've checked. And I'll start shooting indiscriminately or randomly in through a house window. 
You can't even see what's going on. Suppose they've killed the child as well. And that child is going to be damaged after that. I don't know. The neighbour regrets reporting it. It makes me wonder if he said, did he inadvertently say something provocative? Did he say she's got a gun? Did she say they do drugs in there? Does she, did he say, I see men going in and out there all the time? Did he say, oh, black people live over there? What did he actually say? He couldn't have just said the door is open unless they interpreted the door open as being a negative, as being drug dealers. Because sometimes, you know, if, if you've got traffic going in and out in a house and they're doing drug dealing, sometimes they leave the door open. Was that what it's about? We'll never know. And you know, nobody's going to tell the truth. The lady is dead. She can't speak up. And so we're left to suppositioning. We're left to hypothesis. We're left to the imagination. And we're left thinking, what am I going to do? Am I going to be the next person in a, in a coffin? Because some unstable police officer decides to shoot indiscriminately. It's not good. It's not a nice feeling. So, what else? I did mention Amber Geiger and the death of both them, Jean. People still recovering from that piece of information. Yeah. Sometimes when I hear things like this, I wonder if they're gunning for, you know, a reaction from us as black people. Because it's just weird. It's just weird that they're just shooting unarmed black people. Why are they doing that? What are they... I'll leave it there. I just do not understand it. Like I said, I can. the only way I can understand it is to say that the people, the police officers that respond in that way are unstable. I do not have any other rational explanation. Those few police officers that do that, they discredit the whole police force. We end up having the community against the police instead of the, the, the legal system against those individuals. Because what it does, it makes people nervous about the police as a whole. That's what it does. So, yeah, that's it for now, people. Keep safe.